us kneel to pray. Almighty God, to whom our all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who have in your tender love towards mankind sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take our, upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility, mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hates nothing that you have made and forgives the sins of all who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the New Testament lesson. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. But in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And I believe in it in part for there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the Church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, 
This is my body, which is, for, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for judgment. About the other things, I will give directions when I come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please stand. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it round his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped round him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments, and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Let me pray with us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Please sit down. Today, we remember three very significant things that occurred in the lead up to the first Easter. Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, the institution of the Eucharist, and the death of Jesus. At first sight, these readings may have little in common. How does Jesus' washing of feet relate to Paul's rebuke of the Corinthians who abused the Lord's Supper? After about a week of praying and reflecting on this, it occurred to me that they both speak to status, to position, and how to relate to other people. It can be seen as being about power dimensions. We have just heard this stunning verse of when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. And it doesn't seem to make much sense in today's context. It is written, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. You probably all know that this act is one of the most humble acts that you can do. And that is done usually by servants or by slaves. People would walk around on dusty roads with sandals so their feet would get really dirty. And it was customary to have your feet washed before you went in for dinner. We can easily forget what an outrageous thing this is that Jesus does. As on a teacher, he is not supposed to wash anyone's feet, much less his disciples' feet. And to do that act of washing feet, he had to leave his place of honor at the table, at the head of the table, take off his clothes, kneel down at the dusty feet of his friends to clean them like a servant. It is a temporary change in status. And when he finishes watching, washing their feet, he puts on his clothes again and returns to his place of honor. And yet he continues to serve right until his death on the cross. This act prefigures his death and in a sense is one way of telling the wider story of the gospel. God in Jesus leaves his place of honor, lays down his robe of glory, and stripped of outward signs of status, performs the most humble task, cleaning people. And after doing that, Jesus returns to his father and sits gloriously at his right hand. Yet he continues to serve, interceding for us with the father, giving his body and blood for the life of the world, lifting us up to be with him. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asks. Perhaps he also asks us, perhaps for the upteenth time, do you understand what I have done for you? Do you understand what it means to serve people who are considered lower to you in rank? Do you understand what it means to leave a glory place and become a servant? Do you understand what it means to be naked like Jesus was on the cross? A few years ago, I watched a video where random strangers were asked to wash each other's feet and massage them. This made for a fair bit of giggling and very awkward moments, but I found it quite beautiful to watch at the same time. One thing that I noticed was this. The situation starts off quite uncomfortable, but quickly it turns into relaxing chats and even some laughs. The person whose feet are washed would open up quite quickly about real life experiences and painful pasts, whilst their feet are being washed and massaged by a complete stranger. And the person who does the washing and the massaging is just listening. This made me wonder. The people who feature in the video do not have particularly dirty feet, or at least not noticeably. But their lives are messy. 
And this made me wonder, what are our dirty roads? What makes our feet dirty? And what do we need to do to clear the mess? The video gives us a hint, I believe. Our hurt makes our life messy. Sin makes us dirty like dust on the roads. And then someone comes along, serving us, listening to our pain and our heart, and clearing the mess, washing the dirt, taking away the blemishing sin. This is such a beautiful picture. Something happens when you attentively serve someone, when you are quiet, and when you listen. It is very vulnerable. It makes people open up. It makes them share pain and admit shame only for it to be taken away. On his last night with his disciples, Jesus takes time to wash the feet of each of his disciples. He listens to Peter's concerns. And we can imagine he listens to what his other friends have to say. And then he continues, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should watch, wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. We are to follow the example that Jesus gave us, perhaps not literally, although that could also be a good suggestion, but symbolically. What will happen if we start or continue to serve others? Serving that involves being quiet and listening to the other person. To really listen, we must step aside from being the center of our own universe and putting off our assumed status as first and putting the other person before us. What would happen if we were to stay in that place of servanthood? When he had, washed, he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? In the same night that Jesus washes his disciples' feet, he and his disciples share the Passover meal, the most important Jewish festival that celebrated God redeeming the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Jesus gives this ancient Passover meal its fully realized meaning as he institutes what we now call the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion or the Eucharist. He takes the cup, breaks the bread and shares it with his disciples. This action also hints at his death. Like the Passover lamb, his body would be poured out and his blood shed. Through Jesus' sacrifice of himself as Passover lamb, we are all saved from evil, however big or small. We are all the same to God, whether rich or poor. Because of Jesus, these things ultimately don't matter anymore. 2000 years ago, and still now, this makes for a groundbreaking change in communities that were divided by status and obsessed by symbols of prestige. If we are all equal to God, then no one needs boasting. No one should be looked down upon. Everybody should be treated with the same respect. And this is exactly where the Corinthian church derailed. When they came together for worship and the Lord's Supper, not everyone was treated with the same dignity and respect. The social divisions among them were visible, even emphasized, because not everyone had the same food or drink. In Corinth at the time, the wealthier people would host dinner parties, but they were not required to provide the same quality food for those socially subordinate to them, such as those who were poor or laborers or slaves. These people were sometimes even supposed to bring their own food and drink. Now these customs were part of Corinthian culture and thus slipped into the way that the church had their meetings. And this was a problem in the Corinthian church because the whole point of coming together for worship and fellowship and to celebrate the Lord's Supper was that it focused on God's act of redemption, which is something they all needed equally much. It was not to be an opportunity to flaunt social status. 
The Corinthian church was supposed to share the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner, a manner worthy of when Jesus instituted it. Instead, the rich members of the community ate amazing food in abundance, whilst poorer church members had little to eat and went hungry. This emphasis on social status and power was a very painful mistake of the Christian community in Corinth because it goes against Jesus' example. After all, Paul says elsewhere that Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. He humbled himself. Now, if the God who made heaven and earth becomes a humble servant, then we have all the more reason to do so. We should also serve one another. In the Easter story, what Jesus has done for us is this. He laid down his glory and was stripped of his power and lived the life of a servant. He was humiliated and suffered until death. But God uses this agony and lowliness to display his power. Paul later writes that the crucified Messiah is a scandal to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles, but that to us he is God's power and God's wisdom. It is scandal and folly because it is the world upside down. The most powerful one, the most holy one, the most glorious one becomes a servant and calls us to follow his example. And it is in this humble way that he triumphs over evil and his race to glory. This week we will celebrate God's power over evil and let us remember that it is only possible because he first left that position of honor and glory for us. He loved his own to the end, like John says. When we celebrate communion tonight, we remember what God has done and we unite ourselves to Christ, to his servant heart, and we are to follow in his footsteps, serving other people. This requires us too to leave our symbols of status behind, to treat one another as honored guests, not like the Corinthian church, but like Jesus treats his disciples. At the end of this service, we will strip the altar and the church of all the decorations and all the things that are beautiful that we use during the services. We do this to remember how completely bare and naked Jesus was on the cross. This nakedness is foreshadowed at the foot washing event when Jesus leaves his place of honor at the table and lays aside his outer garments to wash his social subordinates feet as a servant. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asks his disciples. We do not know what they replied, but tonight let us ask ourselves and let us reflect on this same question again. Do we understand what Jesus has done for us? Amen.
Let us stand and confess our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. You have a special sheet for the intercessions. Father, on this the night he was betrayed, your Son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble, and humble us. us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite, and unite us. us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew, and renew our, our zeal. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, Lord hear us and fill, and us, fill us with, with your, your love. love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give, and us, give us your, your peace. peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us and, and welcome, welcome all, all your, your children, children into, into paradise. paradise. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Continuing in prayer, our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us.
together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past. I grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Continue with our offertory hymn.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And on the night before he suffered, sitting at the table with his disciples, he instituted these holy mysteries that we, redeemed by his death and restored to life by his resurrection, might be partakers of his divine nature. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praise as Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. 
Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. For those of you who are at home, and are not able to receive sacramentally tonight. Well, for others who are here who cannot receive, I invite you to join me in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you offer yourself to us in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us kneel to pray. Pray together the prayer in the middle of the page 50. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. 